24 hours of the Passion, 6 p.m. hour. Jesus takes leave of his most holy mother and sets out for the Seneca. Preparation before each hour. O oh my Lord Jesus Christ, prostrate in your divine presence, I implore your most loving heart to admit me to the sorrowful meditation of the 24 hours in which, for love of us, you wanted to suffer so much in your adorable body and in your most holy soul unto death on the cross. Oh, please, give me help, grace, love, deep compassion and understanding of your sufferings as I now meditate this hour. And for those which I cannot meditate, I offer you my, my will to meditate them, and I willingly intend to meditate them in all the hours in which I have to apply myself to my duties or sleep. Accept, O oh merciful Lord, my loving intention, and let it be beneficial for me and for all as if I effectively and in a saintly way accomplished what I wish to practice. Meanwhile, I give you thanks, O my Jesus, for calling me to union with you by means of prayer. And to please you more, I take your thoughts, your tongue, your heart, and with this I intend to pray, fusing all of myself in your will and in your love and stretching out my arms to hug you I place my head on your heart and I begin my adorable Jesus as I join you in your sufferings and those of your afflicted mother I see that you are about to leave and go where the will of the Father calls you love between you and your mother is so great that it renders you inseparable. For this reason you leave yourself in the heart of your mother and our queen and sweet mother leaves herself in your heart. Otherwise it would have been impossible for you to separate. But your pale face your trembling lips and your weak voice, you almost bursting into tears in saying goodbye. Oh, everything tells me how much you love her and how much you suffer in having to leave her. But to fulfill the will of the Father with your hearts fused together, one with the other, you submit yourselves to everything and offer reparations for those who, unwilling to overcome the bonds, attachments and endearments of relatives and friends, pay no heed to fulfilling the holy will of God or of corresponding to the state of holiness to which God calls them. What sorrow such souls cause you in rejecting from their hearts the love you wish to give them and instead indulge themselves in the love of other creatures? You then bless each other. You give her the last kiss to strengthen her in the bitter sorrows she is about to endure and giving her your last goodbye, you leave. My tender love, as I offer reparation with you, allow me to remain with your mother to console her and to sustain her while you leave. I will then hasten my steps to come and reach you. But to my greatest sorrow, 
I see that my anguishing mother shivers and her pain is such that as she tries to say goodbye to you, her son, her vice dies on her lips and she is unable to utter a word. She almost faints and in ecstasy of love she says, My son, my son, I bless you. What a bitter separation, more bitter than any death. Then her sorrow prevents her from uttering another word and leaves her speechless. Sorrowful Queen, let me sustain you, dry your tears and partake in your bitter sorrows. My mother, I will not leave you alone. Take me with you in these moments that are so sorrowful for you and Jesus and teach me what I should do, how I am to defend Jesus, offer him reparation and so console him and if I must give my life to defend him. I will not move from beneath your mantle. At your word I will fly to Jesus. I will bring him your love, your affections and your kisses together with mine. I will place them in each of his wounds, in every drop of his blood and in every pain and insult of his, so that feeling the kisses and love of his mother in each pain, his sufferings may be sweetened. Then. I will come again under your mantle, bringing you his kisses to sweeten your pierced heart. Dear mother, my heart is pounding. I wish to go to Jesus as I kiss your maternal hands. Bless me as you blessed Jesus and allowed me to go to him. My sweet Jesus, love directs me towards your steps. I reach you as you walk along the streets of Jerusalem with your beloved disciples. I look at you and I see that you are still pale. I hear your voice, sweet, yes, but so sad that it breaks the heart of your disciples who become deeply distressed. You say to them, this is my last time I freely walk along these streets. Tomorrow I will walk along them bound and dragged among a thousand insults. And pointing out the places where you will be most insulted and tortured, you continue. My life here is about to set just as the sun is now setting, and tomorrow at this hour I will no longer be here. But, like the sun, I will rise again on the third day. At your words, the apostles, not knowing what to say, become sad and silent. And you add, take courage, do not lose heart. I will not leave you, I will be with you always. Yet, it is necessary that I die for the good of all. In uttering these words you are moved, and with a trembling voice you continue to instruct them. Before enclosing yourself in the cynical, you look at the sun which is setting, just as your life is setting. You offer your steps for those who find themselves at the setting of life and offer them the grace to set, to let their lives set in you. You make reparation for those who, in spite of the sorrows and delusions of life, obstinately refuse to surrender to you. Then you look at Jerusalem again, the centre of your prodigies and predilection of your heart. Jerusalem, which in return is pre 
preparing your cross and sharpening the nails to commit the deicide. And you tremble. Your heart breaks and you weep over its impending destruction. With this, you offer reparation for many souls consecrated to you, whom you, with so much care, tried to form into portents of lo your love, but ungrateful and unrequiting, make you suffer more bitterness. I wish to offer reparation with you to console you in this bitter blow to your heart. But I see that you are horrified at the sight of Jerusalem and withdrawing your gaze, you enter the cynical. My love, press me tightly to your heart so that I may make your bitterness my own and offer it up with you. And may you look with pity on my soul and pour your love into it as I ask for your blessing. Reflections and Practices by Saint Hannibal de Francia Jesus promptly leaves his mother even though he experiences a blow to his most tender heart. Are we ready to sacrifice even the most legitimate and holy affections in order to fulfil the divine will? Let us reflect, especially on those moments in our lives when we feel distance from the Divine Presence or do not feel any spiritual consolation in our pious devotions. Jesus did not take its last steps in vain. In his steps, his glorif he glorified the Father and asked for salvation of souls. We too should fuse in our steps the same intentions of Jesus. That is, we should sacrifice ourselves for the glory of the Father and the good of souls. We must also imagine placing our steps in Jesus' footsteps. Jesus did not walk in vain but enclosed in his steps the steps of souls and offered reparation for all of their poorly taken steps, thereby offering the Father the glory befitting him. He gave life to all the misdirected steps of souls in order that they might walk along the right path. We should do this in the same way that Jesus did by fusing our steps in the steps of Jesus and with his own intentions. Do we walk on the street modestly and composed so as to be an example to others? As afflicted Jesus walked, he talked to the apostles every once in a while, speaking to them about his imminent passion. And what do we say in our conversations? When the opportunity arises, do we make the passion of the Divine Redeemer the object of our conversations? In seeing the apostles sad and discouraged, beloved, Jesus tried to comfort them. So do we place our conversations and intentions of relieving Jesus Christ? Do we try to speak in the will of the God, infusing in others the spirit of Jesus Christ? As we meditate on Jesus going to the cynical, we should enclose in his heart our thoughts affections, heartbeats, prayers, actions, partaking of food and walk while we perform these actions. By this means, our actions will acquire a divine character. However, since it is difficult to always maintain this divine attribute, as it is hard for the soul to fuse its acts continuously in him, we can compensate with the attitude of our good will. Jesus will be very pleased by this. He will become the vigilant sentry of each of our thoughts, words and heartbeats. He will assimilate these acts within his interior and surround himself with them to keep himself company and gaze upon them with great love 
as the fruit of the soul's good will. Then, when the soul fuses itself in him and does its immediate acts with Jesus, good Jesus will feel so attracted to this soul that he will act together with the soul doing what it does. And he will transform the work of the soul into a divine work. All this is the effect of the goodness of God who takes everything into account and rewards everything, even a tiny act in the will of God so that the soul may not miss out on anything. O oh my life and my all, may your steps direct mine, and as I walk the earth, may my thoughts be in heaven. Thanksgiving after each hour, my beloved Jesus, you have called me in this hour of your passion to keep you company, and I have come. With the most touching and eloquent words, I seem to hear you praying, offering reparation, suffering and pleading in anguish and sorrow for the salvation of souls. I try to follow you in everything. Now I owe you my heartfelt thank you. And I bless you. Yes, O oh Jesus, I repeat my thank you thousands and thousands of times. And I bless you for all that you have done and suffered for me and for everyone. I thank you and I bless you for every drop of blood you shed. I thank you and I bless you for every breath, heartbeat and step. I thank you for all the words, glances, afflictions and affronts you lovingly endured. For everything you did, O oh Jesus, I offer you my thank you and I bless you. O oh, my dear Jesus, let my soul send forth a continuous flow of thanksgivings and blessings. May they draw down on all of us the flow of your blessings and graces. O oh, my sweet Jesus, press me to your heart and with your most sacred hands mark every particle of my being with your I bless you so that my being may send forth a continuous hymn of blessings to you.